This conference will now be recorded. Now, are you uh, able to uh, switch, Akash sir? I don't see a option over here to screen to uh, present the screen. Just one second. Uh, there are two Akash singles actually. Now try again, sir. Sorry. You switched your device, yeah? Yeah, I reconnected. So that's why I guess yeah. the previous one is showing over there. Ah, yes. Okay, no problem. Okay. You can share the screen now. Yeah, yeah, there is an option. Wait a second. Yeah, all right. That's great. So we'll just wait five minutes more and then I can begin. Uh, there's then then we can begin. Yeah, yeah.
all right i guess we should uh, begin now akash sir uh, i'm just starting so uh, a very good afternoon one and all present here thank you for uh, coming to the session of ask me anything the second section se the second session of the five session series wherein you will be interacting with startup founders so today's session will be taken by akash singhal he is the founder and ceo of illuminus Illuminus is a B2B SaaS based, uh, SaaS based learning management software pro platform for premier schools and universities across the globe. He is a uh, Akash sir is a serial entrepreneur with more than seven years of experience, and uh, he has worked extensively in two startups and also helped various other uh, startups to form uh, a sc scalable tech architectures for themselves and their businesses to grow profitably. He first started working in MEDD, which after three rounds of successful investments was acquired by 1MG Plus, the famous 1MG Plus that everybody's uh, using, hopefully. And now he's working on his own uh, learning management uh, software program that will help universities to uh, feel more connected between the staff and students. But uh, let's ask uh, akash sir himself to introduce himself it will be a much better int introduction than what I've, gi I, I've given so akash, um, thank sir. you for talking first of all very highly you know highly about me and i'm really glad to be here as a part of this session ama session so yeah, yeah. let's begin yeah sure so uh, can you tell me what, something about yourself why education it was your passion after health and why why did you choose health and education i mean both of them are very uh, you know humanitarian Central core of the humanitarian counts yeah so, so the, the... I, I want to expand more on it so um, i never thought of entrepreneurship as as just the business making tool or money making tool or money making strategy i thought of, of it as you know really making bringing changes in people's lives and when i was working on my first startup in healthcare so at that time so my father is a gynecologist and from him i have uh, i have seen in um, uh, you know hospitals i have been connected in uh, various medical organizations so i have seen i i had seen some problems with them so that's how we began this healthcare diagnostics making it efficient healthcare diagnostics with uh, med which you were you know mentioned earlier so after 18000 plus uh, customers and user base and uh, expanding to three states we got acquired by one ng you said right uh, but uh, why education so education is something which has really um, you know really, that is something which is um, my personal thing so uh, i have seen that um, you know we always talk about the education system is not good how could it be you know made better or uh, we always keep on talking about that right the kind of education we get in schools universities that gives us degree but in when we talk about the skills and um, the skill set which is actually usable in the uh, industry or to, to make your career growth so that is not exactly the same case so people when they graduate from any institute uh, from uh, any school any college they, they really don't know that what is the next step you know at least when we talk about top 5%, top 10%, top 20%. So yeah, that is the, you know, that's a separate case. But when we see a lot of uh, people, so more than 80% of the people are directionless, that what to choose, what to do about their lives, right? And no college teaches that. So uh, from there itself, when I entered into, uh, uh, you know, IIT Bombay in 2011. So at that time, I when I used to talk about these, um, you know various colleagues various people so at that time i really you know it was said to hear that when you they used to say tera to, tu to IT mein, tera to ho jayega, hum ka kya hoga, and all of these <laughs> things so and we have been hearing you know ids i think are very overhyped i personally feel uh we hype them hype these uh, institutions very much but more than that it is about the personal passion and it, it is about the personal growth so mm -hmm. alumnus as you see it is uh, the kind of thing which illuminated alumnus. Uh, what uh, the vision we wanted to bring it, bring about it was uh, when somebody graduates from an institute, 
he should be so self sustainable so illuminating that wherever he, wherever he goes or wherever he steps in so he illuminates he or she illuminates the whole world and that's how it began actually and uh, nice. in the right 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 so that's about the industry you said the that's great you mentioned studying in iit bombay i i know it's chemical engineering and uh, yeah. now ceo so how did the shift in perspective occur from your end so uh, <laughs> it was it did definitely take like eight years of difference of um, from you know getting into it and chemical engineering and then after becoming in, you know coming into this field so yeah it certainly you know did not happen overnight but uh, coming from that part so choosing chemical engineering to be honest on the first part it was uh, more of um, more of chance as you would say it was not exactly my preference but when i actually got into chemical engineering i really liked the concept how chemical engineering when people think about it it is uh, they confuse it uh, with the chemistry or uh, applications of uh, these things but it is not you know it is not about that it is about the processes and uh, entrepreneurship is also about three things people processes and product so processes the part processes you know building the uh, chemical uh, you know when we are working with chemical engineers or in the chemical engineering plants so, so building a final product from a very scratch point from these raw materials so that is the whole process uh, which are you know a lot of it i really don't remember 90% of it i am really sure about that but uh, there is a lot of it so uh, these things really taught to taught a uh, you know good part in entrepreneurship and after that when i was in uh, college when i was in iit bombay so i was really fortunate enough to get uh, surrounded by these uh, amazing entrepreneurs and um, you know maybe housing.com people maybe leaf technologies laundry 247 so there were a lot of startups always um, bhavesh was our senior um, uh, so he was in hostel 9 i was in hostel 6 so he uh, you know ola how how ola came up before us so that's how we saw the whole culture uh, beginning up at that time it was not a lot uh, if we see before 2013 it was not a lot uh, in india mm. after that the whole startup ecosystem really grew a lot and uh, at that moment we were there in uh, that ecosystem so yeah that was the fortunate point for us and uh, i really gelled up with these entrepreneurs that you know creating something building something for uh, mm. which uh, people really find use people that can really make good changes in people's life so that's how the whole journey shifted towards this line that's fascinating uh, so you mentioned that in iit bombay you got to view different uh, perspectives and you interacted with a lot of intellectuals from there mostly due to the cine formed there and uh, you know mumbai being mumbai you got a boost so can you tell me what uh, projects or internships you did that helped you along the journey as in um so they, okay so during the college time so, yeah you know, so during this college, college time internship that important is the college time internship or whatever experience you gain that important that it helps you gain a perspective on what you want to do so internship is a very broad term internship is okay. a very broad term if you say in that term because uh, yeah. um, you know there is no as as we put it that way so it is um, people think that internship can be done only in the college times but i think that college is uh, just you know that is something which is most common but people also if you have seen the movie intern so yeah, uh, i don't know how many people have seen it it is a pretty nice movie the you know 50 years or 60 years kind of guy so he's doing intern so there is no mm. uh, you know age of learning so internship really teaches mm. you a lot and uh, with the internship are uh, you know my and my friend so uh, our philosophy we used to be that what is there to not not just web what to do but what not to do so we try to experiment with these companies that okay this these are the things like okay sales uh, i will do sales i will do data interpretations but we knew that okay this thing is not is my cup of tea so internship really teaches you a lot you have to do a uh, lot of experiences but more than that there should be some focus and there should there it requires a lot of dedication rather than just you know putting it as just a job so mm-hmm. as you asked what i did uh, how i i did in uh, iit so what 
uh, IIT is at two, you know, two things. So one is uh, about the companies, other companies uh, that is corporate or startups, and there is a college cultural thing. So there are festivals like Mood Indigo, Tech, uh, you know, Tech Fest. So I was associated with these bodies and uh, working as you know managers and working as as um, you know team team manager. So that part is uh, somewhere uh, really taught me a lot. But uh, on the other front. When I was working with the, these companies, like um, uh, as I was telling about these um, startups, so hmm. that thing is really pushed me in towards the technology part. So, bring, you know, building a product from scratch and um, making something sustainable, making some scalable solution for the real people. So that is what it taught. That's very nice and a wonderful uh, ideology. I hope everybody catches it and continues. Uh, you go. How how was the matlab, internships a profitable venture for you? No, matlab, ke, uh, you how did it help you in the journey you made? Matlab, aside from the people skills that you got. So. Uh... Again, it, it is not um, it is not a overnight thing. It is it is it comes with the progress process and progress. So once you mm -hmm. move forward with the um, internship or a job or anything, so experience is not the just the number of years. It is the amount of effort you put in. So uh, for example, Leaf Technologies, I, as I was telling about. So there was one company I got internship. You know, I got internship offer from that was a dream company of that time, and only CS graduates were um, selected, and I was from the chemical engineering. So um, that was that company was in Delhi, and uh, when I had to leave for this company after my third year uh, for the summer internship, when I was leaving, so I got to I got connected with uh, Web of Tolio. So he was the founder of Leap Technologies. So at that time, the hard moment was to you know when I saw their stuff, the kind of stuff they were building, it really shook me off. The uh, the Delhi internship that was paying very well, and uh, most of the people really would have chosen that thing. You know, they would not have. Uh, they would think that okay, back to the and then in the semester time, we will do, uh, the, you know, work with Lee. But that then, you know, it is more about the hard decisions you make. Uh, not, you know, ninety percent of the people um, think that uh, some people get lucky, but it is about the hard decisions you make along the journey. So these things really shape you up. Uh, so. Uh... Let's talk. Uh, uh, change the topic a bit. Let's talk about your healthcare startup. You co-founded the MEDD, if I uh, Med, did correct. Med, yeah. Med. Okay. So yeah, can yeah. you tell us more about what Med did and how it uh, helped sustain your uh, motto, Marla? Right, right, right. Yeah. So how Med. You got it right. So Med was uh, uh, into healthcare, and as I was telling, it was about making the healthcare diagnostics uh, delivery efficient. So at that time, uh, as we always see, there is a you know when we when it comes to diagnostic labs, uh, there are you know two thousand rupees tests, there are five thousand rupees tests, and there is uh, no limit to it. So mm. and many people know, many people might not know that there is a huge huge margins uh, in, um, uh, included in that. Up to seventy percent or eighty percent of the margins are included in that, and um, uh, that part is you know most of the big chunk goes back to the back to the doctors when they write okay. it. Okay, go to this particular lab. Okay, there is a tie up you know from the back door. The major chunk of it is coming back from the doctor's door. So that part we really wanted you know to um, to do you know bring some democracy in that. So that was more of a revolution or a moment rather than just a startup. So um, what we were building, it was actually a um, merger of two products. So one was Med, that was B2C platform. And uh, you know you could book a test from your app and you could, so uh, you don't have to really go in there and uh, you know get into line to get this appointments booking. And then after uh, get the test done and get um, the you know wait for the results go back for the go back for getting the reports and then going back to the doctors. So all of this process we actually you know uh, we, you, you could you could directly book the test from your 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 app and uh, majority of the chunk of that uh, margin we pass it on directly to the patients. 
so for example if you what uh, the test you would uh, go for 1000 rupees test so you could do it for 600 rupees only in on our app so okay. first thing was that and uh, then uh, there was only 10% of the chunk which we used to keep as a convenience charge so that was our business model and 40% uh, and using that which uh, we used to market these labs and these labs were not any other lab these were uh, nabl accredited labs iso accredited labs so uh, good labs only which had some um, authentic results so that was one model and electronic health records then bringing it on the app then second part was the saas based lab management software mm. so most of the lab management softwares are built by some uh, vendors some companies uh, so what we wanted to bring is you know bringing this inventory connection uh, among the labs and among the uh, um, among different companies uh, like providers so we wanted that the whole ecosystem to build on that particular thing That's so nice. uh, yeah yeah so inventory management uh, you know some uh, vials are very short term some vials are very long term so putting it in us in such a way that it could be made efficient so that was the that was again the saas model as i was talking so saas is something um, as 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 our topic lies for today saas is something uh, i am really i okay so first of all um, i am not really sure how many people really know about saas uh, so it is software as a service the software is um, to give give the example so the best part is uh, if you have used microsoft excel or um, uh, you know microsoft word and now we use google doc so what is the difference there is um, on google on the microsoft excel or microsoft uh, word so you could do you could make a file on your computer that is fine that is nice you could install it on your own computer and then you could uh, mail the whole file and but when it comes to the collaboration among 15 people for example in our team we are working together and we are making a talk or making a presentation making working on some excel sheets uh, so it 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 it, it uh, really can't happen but using saas because it is on the cloud and it is all everyone can collaborate using that particular thing uh, the uh, one you know alumnus which we are building so on that um, on that basis only we are building alumnus hmm. yeah. so uh, let's talk more on uh, somewhat on uh, uh, alumnus tell can you tell us more about what alumnus is and how okay. it is impacting universities yeah 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 i really love to you know about you know that part i yeah. never get bored of it so as a founder <laughs> i shouldn't be <laughs> so, <laughs> so uh, this is a suite of uh, learning you know a suite of apps for four major stakeholders uh, students teachers parents and administration so suite of what apps it is learning management software and what is learning management software so learning management software is a is a uh, platform or a software on which uh, a um, a learner can actually learn but there can be two ways one is um, self paced second one is uh, second one is directed so self paced self paced means for example nowadays we see uh, for last four or five years we are seeing edx coursera udemy an academy there are there are new companies also coming up these are moocs like massive open online courses through which a learner can directly go there and learn any skill he or she wants earlier it used to be um, earlier it used to be traditionally uh, it used to be offline classrooms then it shifted to online learning but then uh, we believe that uh, you know these platforms really bypasses the role of the teacher right hmm. bypasses the role of teacher so the second part the core part comes in uh, that is uh, directed learning and uh, how does directed learning come in so we uh, we rather than bypassing the teacher we uh, enable them we empower them to use to through the technology to get back into the system to get back into teaching and learning so that's how the intelligent teaching and learning so uh, that again bringing back the role of student bringing back the role of teachers parents and administration as i was talking about google doc or google um, uh, google slides or um, google sheets so collaboration becomes easier so that's how um, using our app using the suite of uh, lms alumnus uh, lms uh, these uh, four major stakeholders can be clubbed together and we provide it for the universities for the schools for the colleges 
uh, or coaching institutions, any institution, any educational institution uh, who are um, teaching or learning. So that's how it works. Uh, then if we see the problem, the core problem, which used to be there in the earlier times was um, there have been learning management systems. So most of the, uh, first of all, 90% of the LMS systems, which we see in the market, 90, 95% of the LMS system. So these are corporate LMS, the, which are uh, used in the corporates, training employees, training, uh, you know, there are modules and everything. But on the educational front, there are not many. A few are like Moodle, Canvas, Blackboard. So uh, then why is that, that, you know, only two to three, three to four percent of the market is captured? Teach, you know, schools and universities are teaching on the traditional ways. So it being a, being a decade old, um, even decade old, um, yeah. So even be, being decade old industry, it has not captured the actual market. So e because there is ease of setup. So setup big, is a big, uh, big difficult part of it. Then usability is a difficult part of it because all the LMS systems are made in a very traditional manner. So when teachers uh, actually try to do, try to work on that, students are work, you know, trying to work on that. These are these are very overwhelming for them. So uh, we actually make it very simpler, simple to set up because most of the systems came up with like, um, they require big servers, big, um, uh, you know, good IT people to support that, but not every educational institution has that. So that that's where a SaaS based thing comes up that they can't, ex you know, Moodle, for example, Moodle. So Moodle, they can install in their, you know, they can have their own servers, they can have their own, um uh, uh it team if the college is big so they can really afford it but if um, most of we talk about most of the schools they're they are not in the business of technology they are business in the business of education and how a uh, technology company can really embed in that part wherein they can actually help that and most of the systems like blackboard canvas these are very, very costly. They come in hundred thousand dollars, two hundred thousand dollars kind of cost when uh, working with the uh, international market. So that becomes a very, very big challenge in uh, you know setting it up. So um, again, integrating between different apps using the same data, integrating, um, for example, a, a teacher gave the assignment for students. So at that time itself, uh, a parent gets the notification that, okay, your child has gotten this assignment and uh, he or she needs to do it by tomorrow. So you, so what happens in earlier times, like my or your parents, so they were not really, you know, our kind of generation parents were not really um, that educated enough. Most of the, or they did not have the skill set to get into our education, but um, they had a lot of time in our, in today's case, Parents have um, a lot of, parents don't have a lot of time, but they have good knowledge. They really want to help their kids and they really want to get into their education. But most of the softwares they come in, so they come as, in as um, the Rajasthani Thali. So, um, you know, attendance is here, fees management is here, and um, you can go in different modules and check it out. So, but that really doesn't solve the problem. You know, learning front is not there. So with that thing, alumnus came up. So yeah, the, so that is uh, about the alumnus. But when we talk about the SaaS industry, um, you know, building a SaaS business, if you have, um, I would like to say, if if somebody has some something that uh, you know, um, a people can really collaborate on, people can really um, go online. So there are most of the people are working in the in the industries which are closely connected to engineering. But there are a lot of uh, um use cases i have seen that like when i keep talking to lawyers when i keep talking to um to um, you know commerce field so they're not exactly connected with the, the technology people so there is a lot of opportunity over there rather than solving in these directions like uh, technology integrated directions so yes uh, it can really help. so yeah uh, so um um Param, i want to know more about like what is the kind of audience we have uh like uh, the majorly yeah 
uh, more students the a few professors also and uh, mm. one, uh, two directors of the uh, colleges also okay okay yeah okay so the, that was more about hmm, sorry explaining more about how uh, what exactly is the difference between a sas and a mooc uh, or and a mooc and an lms sorry no sas and mooc and LMA, lms are totally uh, a very different things like learning management system is a very different thing lms is uh, lms and uh, sas is a is a software as a service when you for example google drive um you see in case of organizations if you go so if you need a crm for example you go for hubspot you go for salesforce if you need um if you need some communication channel you go for slack in case of organization but when it comes to schools and colleges and universities there is no something that clicks to your mind that okay um, to solve my problem there is one company that you know alumnus for example so it there is no market leader as such and not just in india even you know in us we are working with clients in new zealand in uae but even there it is you know there are totally vendors you know local vendors who are trying to get into you know you know solving some uh, problems with um, 30 clients 40 clients 50 clients 100 max so that is the kind of figures they are working with there is no international market leader so with the sas that really becomes possible because you are you are um, you are uh, uh, affordable because you are you don't really need to be there for example uh, we are working from our place but we are serving the clients globally so that thing really helps you need to have a good um, a good technology background if you don't have it you have to have some partner if you have some good technology background then uh, you can understand that and second part is one part is technology background but that is how you solve it but why and what are you solving it so that part is the bigger part that part is a really bigger bigger part so there might be some uh, some things which you want to initiate on you want to work on you want to create an asset so but what is that um, you know it can't just you know in the today's time it is it can't just really work because of the money Ki, okay theek hai, i can create an asset make asset bana leta hu, access bana leta hu and that will be paying that will um, keep my life afloat that that's not how now you know things work up these things used to work in maybe 10 years back maybe 20 years back because not a lot of companies were there today competition is very high and you need to have some some usp that is something which really is required so that is the more on the SaaS part the third part you were saying mooc the so mooc is again as i was telling it is massive open online learning uh, courses no, these are uh, you can you you know these companies have some open libraries and you go from from module to module and learn from that part get some certification maybe so that is more on the self learning part but if uh, as you said as you mentioned we have some professors over here and uh, you know college professors students over here so if, if somebody wants to set up these um, between a uh, link between teachers students parents and administration some centralized platform so that thing really comes in the picture then that's when lms comes in the picture okay that's um, nice. if you um, if, if you that, say uh, so we can initiate yeah yeah just one more question you said uh, you need a person with a technical background so what are the other backgrounds that you feel are necessary in a startup uh, team that is just being uh, Param. Param. yeah just uh, yeah sorry huh so uh, yeah, there is a I lot of participants was, yeah i just now muted the participant sorry uh, okay. I, okay. May, my main question was uh, that you that you have someone with a technological background on your team uh, so i wanted to know what other backgrounds are necessary for a startup team to have as founders or co-founders matlab what other skill sets must be ticked off you right. yourself a part of two startups and you view a lot you viewed a lot of startups so you know about the legality well what all backgrounds need to be ticked off so can right, you right. speak yeah 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 so in terms yeah. of um, you know startup is a very broad term because uh, every startup mm -hmm. has different needs every startup is you know solving different problems for mm -hmm. you know different type of uh, target groups tgs uh, so they need to have a very different skill set 
so um, some might be you know re, you know needing more on the technology front some might be needing you know in case of like for example i was talking about healthcare startup med right mm. so on the mm. med part part there were two two parts so one was into um, you know bringing the technology which was uh, uh, helping you know uh, which was bringing the labs on the platform and which was bringing the customers on the platform so that was more of aggregation platform so yeah that could have been made um, if you did not have any technology background and you could you know outsource it to someone with the idea but in case of uh, for example bringing the the second part which i was talking about that is lms so that is very you know it is not it is a very complex thing um, because there are multiple stakeholders there are multiple users different kind of users to it and uh, different background for example now which now what how we work on so we work with universities schools uh, colleges coaching institutions then there are group of schools so with every new use case and different curriculums obviously hmm. so so all of that you know comes with lot of uh, intricacies lot of uh, uh, factors wherein different set of skill set are required and i guess uh, you need to figure it out yourself when you are starting it up when if you are starting a technology you need to see that you are in the business of technology technology is your core business because people often uh, uh, often make it wrong you know predict it wrong that for example if we are talking about med at that time we were a bit immature to think that this is a technology startup this is technology you know we were healthcare startup but you know we were healthcare startup but um, enabled no. through technology right while in the second product of that part cerebrum you know lab management software as this lab, lab management software so yes healthcare is one part but uh, we are solved now we are uh, helping these healthcare uh, companies through the technology so then it becomes the more on technology front now in the in this part we are uh, definitely we are helping the educate you know education front but with the technology so we become more on the technology front in case of moocs in case of moocs like um for example i i wanted to create a create a online platform on which i wanted to host some course so in that case um, that would become more on educational front because i am providing the education through technology mm -hmm. so you need to understand the weightage of uh, the equations that it is required and uh, it cannot be again come in you know day one or you know very overnight it will come eventually and it is good to have uh, some you know good people good people who you you can consult to in your uh, connections so these um, you know there are there are people with experiences over the time so mm -hmm. yeah we have you know we have um, reached out for help for very amazing you know educators in in terms of educators in terms of technology people so there are a lot of mentors there are a lot of advisors who really help when in need so it really helps you can't exactly do it all by yourself definitely there is a yes. lot of amazing team required to make that vision success, successful definitely definitely uh, so let's move on to the topic for today how to build a saas company what do you feel are the requirements and how you feel one can achieve making a saas product those will be the main questions and i'm uh, passing over the baton to you and i'll just stop talking now yeah <laughs> okay so uh, on the saas front as i was again uh, I, um, as we have already discussed um, saas is about the software as a service and uh, when we are talking about software you are actually in the tech business you are not in uh, not in the core like education or healthcare as i was telling about um, so saas uh, you know that requires good technology background that really is required uh because you are hosting you don't uh, you are not creating some cds like software used to be key creating some app which can be installed in different platforms right you are you are creating a technology on which multiple clients you know different kind of clients different kind kinds of um customers can really come in and they can use your product so i hope you are understanding that so yes a good technology background is required uh i think uh, that would be more repetitive if i you know speak on it so let's uh, if you say param so we can go with the um, ama uh, you know if uh, anyone anyone has the answer so let's go with the q and a param are you there
Yeah. Hello. Yeah, but I was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I am saying uh, uh, that would be more on the repetitive front if I said um, uh, more about it because, um, as I said, like technology is the you know core requirement to it, and hmm. um, again, SaaS is SaaS being a very open front. Uh, how yeah. did you go about finding a problem? I mean, you you went to the healthcare and you found a similar inventory problem. uh and now you gone to education and you found an inventory problem so no education was much before um the health healthcare startup i was working in 2015 and 2016 where in okay. uh, education part when i got into iit as, as i was mentioning so in 2011 when i got into iit at that time um, moodle was being inter- introduced over there and that was okay. the first time um, any learning management software Uh, would have uh, that was you know very first time that was introduced was being introduced in india hmm. uh, outside also outside also it was not a very old concept but that time it was um, uh, very new in india and when i used to talk with colleges with the um, schools so they really said you know when i used to explain the concept that this is something which is being used what is being used in our our um, uh, college so they they were very intrigued by it that okay this is something which can really bring some change but they did not know how because at that time infrastructure was not there people did not have um, um you know devices maybe laptop maybe mobile and then there was um, internet connectivity issue after that internet connectivity issue and devices issue was majorly solved when um, after the geo revolution you know 2006 after 2016 when 4g came up so the streaming part and all of that part so that really was solved after that also you know when i you know meanwhile i i was researching on different parts with the teachers with the students parents administration so everyone has had their own problems how could we solve it the like teachers have don't come with a technology savvy background right mm. we have to think in a way which um, can really help them out so mm. i saw if every you know if they were given a 70 year old person is given a new smartphone which one would be the first app they would be installing i'm let me ask you um whatsapp maybe whatsapp so yeah. yeah that is that is something you know first thing comes in our mind so that is how we yeah. solved it why, why it cannot be uh, like just like whatsapp right uh we used to do you know use moodle so i definitely know about the setting up because uh, setting up part was not easy um they had some good it servers again good it team and setting up for them then there are deployments part like getting students data teachers data managing all that data so there is a separate team for that administration team and then after it comes with to the students and teachers and there was still no parents connection to it so yes when i was discussing with the, these uh, people so technology adoption is a big problem was it did seem a big problem but later on education uh, people did not think that education can actually uh, be approached through technology education will always remain separate they used to think but uh, education is the core of everything right education and healthcare these mm. two things are very core of everything so but if, if you see uh, you know for everything for um, all of the things we see technology all around but when in when we think about education now we can't exactly say that but it really came very late and that is you know now is the time when it is actually in uh, you know in the form of inception now we are starting up just starting up there is a hmm. long long way to go in terms of we really want to integrate technology and really want to make the life simple really want to make the coaching simple coaching as in training simple so after mm-hmm. geo and after that uh, byju's came up topa came up an academy came up so people really think thought that okay now technology can re- be really helpful in education and that is also even till the date that is also with the uh, 30 40% but after the corona thing after the lockdown mm-hmm. so it is very crazy i mean uh, the demand is so crazy for the you know schools want to go online colleges want to go online because otherwise they can't really charge students solution. and the yeah. whole yeah koi solution nahi hai koi there is no way so mm. uh, a lot of people thought that 
they did not even understand that what is that we are trying to solve or what is that we are trying to do for these years but now um, after um, you know we always worked on the core we worked with a few clients initially but uh, now they think that really something can be something is uh, something different is in the future a paytm mm-hmm. moment it is sort of a paytm moment because paytm was a good to have a good to have thing before demonetization but if we mm-hmm. talk about uh after that in 2017 2018 and now it is already growing up every sabji wala every tela wala everyone has it so yes it is the need of the hour nobody uh, can nobody can actually remain without waiting so that's how we we saw it in uh, to come in future but we did not see it coming too early and uh, mm-hmm. covid is such a situation it is obviously you know when we talk about covid so it is very uh, sad in in lot of fronts but in terms of businesses in terms of um, entrepreneurship so it is very 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 interesting situations right now in the, for example travel tech hospitality these things are shut but in terms of education in terms of uh, majorly education health tech there is a lot of uh, picking up so uh, if um, i would like to say to all the people over here so if if somebody is thinking about some things if if they are trying to make something this is the time wherein actually you can work on the core you can learn new stuff you can uh, build new stuff and uh, it will take obviously a cup uh, maybe a year maybe a couple of years when the thing actually op- the market actually opens up totally but by then you will be um, very much ready and a lot of companies would have shut up you know shut down so that then you will get the leverage of the whole part nice interesting perspective uh, i'll now uh, we just opened there's a to someone uh, we we'll yeah, just yeah. ask him to unmute himself and uh, ask the question parag pallav can you just ask the question hello good evening sir good evening parag uh, sir i want to have a question like uh, the an app is there in market that is uh that is for the uh, uh, shop owners that handle the khatas it was on copies but now it is hand- it is being handled online so is there any scope of uh, is there any scope of uh, uh, of such a app that can handle the uh, taking orders online and uh, delivering them because nowadays every everyone every even in my area that is a very small area but there Uh, there are two or three shops that are going online they are started delivering online so how can uh, at what scale i need that uh, 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 i want to know about the money part and i want to know about the software part what is the need uh, what is the quantity that i will need to establish for uh, just say 50 shops okay that is a very broad question but yes Uh, let me answer uh, on this front so nobody thought that udan at the, in the initial stages nobody thought that udan could pick up or nobody thought khata book could pick up when we see the shop owners or see the tier 3 markets tier, you know small shop owners they are uh, khata book and udan they are really doing wonderful job and both of them are uh, udan is definitely a unicorn uh, in terms of khata book also if we see so they have recently it is 60 million dollars 85 million dollars are total fundraised so they are yes. they are also like my seniors so now they are doing um, uh, they are managing the balances or they are managing the the bank account sorry the ledgers of uh, these people yes. these uh, shop owners right but logistics still stage stays with them because uh, I, when i see a lot of shop owners so they really want to do some online delivery but um, these um what do you say uh, sir there is also like, one part mm-hmm. that is uh, taking orders online uh, so that it will reduce the uh, waiting time of the customer they can they can give orders from their home so that it will reduce the waiting time at the shop uh, the shopkeeper will make the the, uh, the make the order ready as soon as the customer arrive at the shop it will just pay and pick or it can pay online as well it has just to pick the things 
So, Parag, that is actually interesting perspective because uh, when I when I talk about Dunzo, so I have I I have been a very regular customer of Dunzo. I yes, you know order a lot of things from the you know hyper local. It is kind of hyper local delivery. But uh, when it comes to that, uh, I see, uh, for example, I order something. It will go and uh, the 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 person will go and then uh, it is not as smooth as as it could be. I always think. It takes sometimes it takes uh, 1.5 hours, which is not right. You know, it could be as simple as it is. You know, something is prepared over there and something. So it it is done very wonderfully by Swiggy and uh, Zomato in in terms of food. But uh, when it um, you know it comes in uh, various other segments, it is not exactly the case. So yes, oh. there is an interesting uh, thing in that. But that is uh, again, I would say. Um, Initially, you know, rather than going in in this front, when I was talking about, you must know that what business you are, you are, you will not be exactly in the technology business. You can manage all the, you know, initial business, initial hundred or fifty uh, clients, customers, uh, using Excel. I I always say, you know, talk say to people that you know bring build a business, try building a business on Excel, and if you are successful in getting initial initial pennies, so yes. Uh, uh, you know, technology should all, only be made to make it simple, to make it efficient. Yes, sir. I am hoping you are getting my point. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, and about the money, as you said, so I I am really sorry. I I don't think I would be able to answer because that is a really broad term in terms of um, that will require a good enough calculation. But I am very sure that if you if you put it up, so definitely you will be able to make a good Excel and uh, ultimately come out with good numbers. That okay. Th these are the numbers I'll be requiring. Uh, sir, what about the technology to... part? If if I move up uh, from Excel to something more. So uh, I think in that case, uh, initially start with that thing. If something comes up, yeah. I am always there. I can share. You know, um, you can always get connected. You can search me on LinkedIn, and we can get connected. Sure. Once you get some business, sure. be happy to help you out in in case of uh, technology, right? Okay, sir. Okay. Yeah, so Parag was, um, um, I hope uh, Parag got the answer. So we can move. Yes, the, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so is there any other uh, knowledge you would like to impart, Akash, sir, to the fellow uh, participants? From your end, I guess I guess I have talked a lot. So uh, yeah, I'm that, my, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, just just one question. You mentioned Excel. You mentioned Slack. Any other resources you found that are uh, useful? Um. So I think uh, in the early days, it is very important for um, you know people are learning. Uh, people, all the people are going into IT segments, right? I come from technology background, and I used to uh, motivate people. Uh, just give me a second. Just give me a second. This is discharging. All right. Uh, yeah. Yes. Huh. So uh, I used to motivate people to go for uh, IT part that you know learn various languages and uh, you know i came from technology part i was always uh, uh biased towards it that okay you should learn coding coding is one part but if you really work on the some some basic skills like you know make if you really want to get into entrepreneurship and um, i don't know if i should talk about entrepreneurship but i guess um, that's what here for we are here for so you should work on making uh, presentation work on numbers that um, that comes more in the commerce part. You know, getting some basic unit economics, getting done some basic you know, unit unit economics. So as Parag was asking, Parag had very valid question with these uh, shop owners. So for example, if he if he asks for fifty shops, if he wants to open, so if uh, one shop requires these 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 kind of inventories, and what are the use yes, cases sir. there can be? So all of the big businesses can start in very basic thing as Excel. Excel is very powerful tool. And presentation, why presentation? Because when you're going in um, 
talking with the various um, maybe clients maybe customers maybe um, investors that thing really helps you out and there are uh, uh, when we start making it up it really initially it is very very immature but over the time it can really get good so um, rather than you know waiting it for the time when we actually start up or you know uh, you can initiate by you know it doing it today making some docs so all of these things why i'm talking about because these are not exactly technology things but these things really strengthen up your core about the entrepreneurship right hmm all right yeah uh, we you talked about uh, resources that should that could be helpful to businesses like slack and uh, google uh, docs that help in collaboration are there slack other wonderful tool. huh yeah are slack there, is a very wonderful yeah are there, are there any other tools that are less heard about that are helpful um uh i think um powtoons would be one huh you know, powtoons would be one powtoon okay so it is about the video you know creating videos okay nice so thank you right and uh, if we, if uh, somebody wants to present his idea so only presentation you know presentation is one thing but sometimes it is you know people want more in the upload way that it comes you know connecting the dots and it you know dots can not exactly be connected more in uh, the presentation because as you see it is 12 um, uh, maybe 12 slide presentation 13 slide presentation but these are 12 slides in video it is all moving pictures these are just the pictures but in case of video it is moving pictures and people get a uh, good idea while creating videos it is very difficult to for someone to make uh, as you know it might get very difficult to make but in case of using powtoons or um, yeah as i was as you asked for so canva is one good tool creating so these are the uh, you know uh, entrepreneur is never um, never one tool it is the tool uh, it is a you know it is a bundled tool all together there is you need to have an arsenal and uh, swiss knife as they call it so <laughs> you are not a very sharp knife but you are a swiss knife you can do you should be doing all the things but uh, by the time you require you will have to arrange you know good people over the time so there are a lot of you know soft skills you uh, one need to work on right. so i guess um, um, that is uh, most of it if somebody has a question i am definitely very i'll be definitely very happy to answer it i have a last a query sir yeah uh, uh sir is there uh, uh, any clarification about uh, how to start a podcast or uh, if i go for a video if i want to share my knowledge of any topic mm -hmm. so i wouldn't be very perfect person to ask this because i have not really uh, created okay. the podcast but yes um, i keep on listening to a lot of them so um, first of all um, you can definitely check out good post podcast and you will get a good idea for example gary v i am uh, i am not sure if you are really following uh, that but sir i am following him you are following him <laughs> yes most of the entrepreneurs or early entrepreneurs so they, you know they have their uh, gary v is their favorite so you can yes. follow that guy and you can actually see that how how to put in some value podcast is not just about being present over there on the camera or on the on the mic it is about yes, actually creating value actually providing the value which a lot of people or maybe not lot of people maybe two people maybe three people maybe 10 people they are looking for they can which can really make an impact and they want to listen to your second podcast it might not be lot of quant lot in quantity but consistency is uh, the key as you as gary always say yes sir putting in hard putting in hard work um, consistently and uh, you know results are results you will see that it they would be really good yes okay so i guess um, we can yeah move thank you much akash sir for the wonderful session
I'll just ask one more, just one more round. Is there anybody who has any questions or queries? लीगल स्टेप्स वी हैव टू टेक इन ऑर्डर टू सेट अपनी लीगल लाइक लीगल legal commission from government like that okay so rahil um, uh you have you are in may i know who, uh, what are you doing right now like are you in college or i am a college student okay and i'm working so, on my uh, startup okay that's good what are you working on uh like i i build up my team and we are working on our website after that we have to launch it and then we have to take some permission like that for pay doing payment like all okay good good so um about the you know about initiating the startup obviously if you have initiated you you might have got a lot of idea in previous um, you know maybe days maybe months but yeah, yeah. um uh on the part which you really need to look at uh so delegating delegating the tasks when it when they really come up initially you have to do it all but when they really come up so you need to find the right people to do it some people might yeah. be really good in that part for example if um, if i talk about just say uh, i talked about uh, creating video right so yeah. if i Uh, when i'm in the learning mode so definitely i will you know do i will put in some days in it maybe a week maybe two weeks but when i'm actually you mm-hmm. know running a company or building a company at that time if i if i see there are two options there is a person who can make good videos for me in um, mm-hmm. a couple of thousand rupees maybe 5000 rupees a uh, basic video or if i want to create on my own right so yeah. it is better to you know um, uh, even if you don't have money you should get some you know money from somewhere and pay that guy and get your video done rather than doing it all yourself it is a better choice fine okay. yeah and uh, there are uh, there is one thing with uh, as um, um we were talking about so there are a lot of people you know in college we when we are so we are always in the hurry of like creating new thing or building new thing or getting you know making something of my own that is yeah without without a vision uh, no it is not exactly for rahil or parag it is general thing so we are in bit in hurry but it is always good if you can like really if you think that this is um, a big thing it is not happen it is not going to happen in a year or a couple of years it is going to take much longer than that even if uh, we might think of it as contradictory so you it is always better to go work with startups good startups and um, get some good knowledge with them rather than just you know putting in your yourselves and uh, um at that moment itself so um, that shows maturity you will get to know uh, what are the core parts um uh required in the startup and it it cannot really be told it can only be experienced while you are really working with them anybody else would like to ask questions all right uh, thank you very much akash sir for the enlightening conversation today and uh, we hope we'll be able to see you soon uh, with us and thank you for the wonderful session today i'm um, i'm okay. i'm very glad yeah. that uh, we had such a great audience and uh, um i got a chance to be here i am really happy and um i am always uh, i always say that i am always there i really like to help people out there if uh, somebody wants some help maybe in an entrepreneurship maybe in building stuff maybe technology maybe uh, you know any sort of mentorship so i am always there for you so you can definitely reach me out on linkedin so yeah
thank you very much Agar. all the best and, uh, uh, wonderful having you here on the ask me anything series and let's so we'll be in touch yeah yep. okay i'm uh, ending the meeting for everyone all right yeah thank you